Hi guys. Good morning. How are you? Keep on joining guys, we'll just start, okay? Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I am good, Jasmine. I'm fine. I'm back at my home. I think you all can see already. So <clears throat> just the thing with the throat. Bucky all good. Good morning, Ritwik. Okay. S Dash, it's your first time. Good morning. Uh, and welcome to the Hindu Daily Quiz. So uh, I'll do one thing. Just... <clears throat> okay. So anyone who has joined private uh, like for the first time, just click on this link that I am sharing, this one, okay? So you'll be able to participate in the link also, uh, in the quiz also, okay? So just click on this link. Don't do not stay only on Zoom. You need to click on this link so that your uh, you know your answers can be evaluated. All right. Good morning, Ankita. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, S Dash, uh, this is uh, not a class actually. This is basically a quiz. Okay. This is based on the Hindu newspaper. Today is the Hindu newspaper. So basically, this is the current affairs quiz. Okay. So I hope you'll enjoy. Good luck for that. Just click on this link. You will be directed to a menti quiz uh, thing, okay? Wherein you can give in your answers. You will get 30 seconds to answer each question. And the faster you answer, the more you would score, okay? So this is the thing. I hope it's clear to you now. Within one, two questions, it will be clear. But just, you know, make sure that you have clicked on the link, okay? Good morning, Muskan. Okay. All right. So yeah, since there are some new participants today, this is about me. My name is Sheva Khan. Okay. And uh, I had completed uh, my BA LLB law degree from Law College Dehradun Transfer University in the year 2019. Okay. I uh, did it with a gold medal in my batch and I've been a national level debater and also public speaker like throughout my educational career basically. And here at Lawsuit, I'm working as the current affairs uh, expert and manager for current affairs, okay? So if you wish to connect with me, you can find me on Twitter as well as LinkedIn handles, okay? So be, these are available by the name Sheva Khan, okay? All right. So guys, this will be our first article of the day. So uh, those who have joined for the first time, so how we do it, that we take an important article from this today's uh, newspaper, and then we try to skim out questions that can be possibly asked in the CLAT exam and basically sometimes in the judiciary exam as well, okay? So the article is, Tribal Rights Activist Father Stan Swami dies in Mumbai Hospital. Okay, so this is the article. He was an 84-year-old priest, was actually 84-year-old priest, who was accused in a Bhima Koregaon violence case. Okay, so... Let's see if you all have parties like you joined already. <clears throat> and one more thing, those who have joined for the first time, please make sure that here while you are you know, joining in the menti quiz on the menti meter, you are putting in your real name. Okay, they, they give you some fictitious names, but just make sure that you are with your real names. Okay, so uh, there are a lot of participants who are not there on menti quiz. Please, guys, I have shared a link. Just click on that link and participate here as well. Okay, Zoom is one different thing where you're able to see my video and the screen sharing this way. Okay, and uh, otherwise it's different. <clears throat> so please make sure that you have clicked both the links that I had shared on the groups. Okay. Yes, thank you so much Anshika. So I see Anshika has uh, shared this link again. Just click on this link also, okay? Then you will be able to participate in the quiz competition okay 
Yeah. Okay, I'll just wait for 30 more seconds. Uh, okay, then we can start. All right. So when I'm, I've seen that all of you have joined the quiz, then I will start. Okay, so quickly guys, just, just click on this link and join. Good, good. Keep on joining. And please make sure that you're putting your real name. Okay. <laughs> Actually, guys, what happens is that we take out our weekly winners. Okay. So after the cumulative score of all the participants throughout the week, every Monday we announce a weekly winner. And that winner gets a loss equal certificate, proper certificate for being for the excellence and you know the merit. Okay, that's why we need your real names. Okay, so two, three participants are still short. Just please click on this link and you know, then we'll start. Okay, I'm, I'm starting the quiz. Please make sure you click the link. Okay, you'll get 30 seconds to answer the question. The faster you answer, the more you score. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see the question. Father Stanislaus Lord Swami is a known what? I just read it out to you guys. Female rights activist, tribal rights activist, law commission member, or pianist? I just read it out to you. Father Stan Swami. The complete name is Father Stanis Stanislaus Lord Swami. What do you think? Choose your answer. Very good. Yes. So the correct answer is that he was a very well-known tribal rights activist. And now he has actually passed away. That is why he was into the news. Okay. So tribal rights activist. Very good, guys. So I hope those who have joined for the first time, you were able to understand that how this quiz is working. If not, please let me know in the chat box quickly. Okay. Or, all right. The next article is crafting a unique partnership with Africa. So the future of India-Africa cooperation is agriculture, even as the China factor looms large. So guys, India has very good uh, relations, you know, when it comes to trade with Africa. And this is from the historic times as well. And till now, uh, in pharmaceuticals, it was a great exporter. India was a great exporter to Africa. And uh, there were some other supplies which were brought from Africa to India. But this article points out that if we want to strengthen the India-Africa relationship or we want to increase the cooperation in the coming future, then agriculture is the key. Because as we know that Africa also is an agriculturally rich country because despite having a lot of natural resources, the manufacturing sector or the development as such is not that good in Africa, in most of the African countries. And if we talk about India, India primarily is an agricultural country. So it says that this can be a very good common link of, you know, point of uh, cooperation between both the countries. Basically, Africa is like a continent when we are talking about at large. Okay. Let's see question number two. The African Continental Free Trade Agreement is an agreement between, your options are 40 African countries plus India, 10 African countries plus China, African states to establish free trade area or none of the options. Guys, please go with the name African Continental Free Trade Agreement. If you pay attention on that, you will be able to answer this question correctly. I hope you have caught my point. Oh. That's why, guys, that's why I was saying that it is the African continental free trade area, which means that within the continent of Africa, we are trying to create a free trade area where, you know, the trade can be taken care of without any trade barriers, any kind of customs, duties, taxes, etc. So that is why it is an agreement amongst the African uh, states to establish free trade area. Okay, so India has got uh, primarily nothing to do with it. It is only based on the African countries. Okay. So please keep it in mind. Okay. Let's see question number two. Which of the following policies are related to Africa? Your options are 
Logistics Exchange Memorandum of Agreement, LEMOA, 100 by 100 Matrix by 2025, One Belt Road Initiative, or the Supply Chain Resilience Initiative. Guys, only one person has answered 100 by 100 matrix by 2025. See, I'll tell you, this is the one which is <clears throat> related to Africa. And please pardon me for my grumpy voice. Okay, I'm so sorry about that. Um, okay, can anybody tell me that uh, where is uh, this related to? Lemoa. It was there into news about... Six, seven months ago, I guess. Lemoa, Comcasa, Becca, all of these, if you remember. Very good. Yes, Harshal. You are correct. It is US, okay? So, Logistics Exchange Memorandum of so Agreement. It basically is an initiative uh, between uh, you know, US and India also primarily because this helps India and US to exchange various kinds of infrastructure and logistics which are important in time, in, you know, in for trade and international waters as well. Okay, so that is, this is US. One Belt Road Initiative, come on guys, this, is, this has to be super easy. Very, very famous. This is like every time, every now and then it is into news. Whenever we talk about, uh, you know, the um, CPEC, which is the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. Uh, not Park. I'm just, uh, I just want to know that this initiative belongs to what? CPEC, yes, is between China and Pakistan, but One Belt Road Initiative. This is from, come on, come on, just make a guess. You already know now. I've just taken the name of the country already. Yes, yes, yes. It's China. Ashwini, it's not India. It's China, okay? So it's basically a Chinese initiative wherein they wish to connect to the entire world through sea routes as well as through road routes, however possible. And if you must have noticed the China-Pakistan economic corridor, which crosses through the, uh, this area, uh, the Baltistan, Gilgit baltistan area, which is... Uh, according to India, it is the park occupied Kashmir. So that also, the CPEC also is a part of the One Belt Road Initiative of China. Okay. And Supply Chain Resilience Initiative. Does anyone know about this? Which country, uh, you know, ha has this? The, the, it is a bra brainchild of which country? Anyone? Okay, I'll tell you. So basically, guys, it's... J oh, wow. Yes, Ritwik, awesome. It's Japan. Okay. So basically, this is an initiative taken by Japan, Supply Chain Resilience Initiative, which tries to reduce the dependence for various kinds of imports on China. Okay, so that is why uh, it you know says that we should be strengthening the supply chain of various goods and services across the globe, and we should not be completely and you know very uh, badly uh, dependent upon China for such imports. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's move further. Let's see question number four. Gandhi set up Dash Farm in South Africa, which was the first farm after being inspired by Tolstoy. Your options are Satyagraha Farm, Phoenix Farm, Tolstoy Farm, or none of the options. <laughs> Think about it. Yes, I think most of you will give one option as the answer. Let's see. Okay. See, this is why. Now I'll tell you why. Before that, guys, uh, those who have joined now uh, on the Zoom call, please make sure that you have clicked on both the links. I'm sure that you must have joined through the message that I had shared in the groups, right? So there are two links in that. One is the Zoom link. You've already joined on that. Okay, another is the participating link. Please click on that. Otherwise, just... I have shared that link over here as well. Please just click on this link also. Then only you will be able to answer the questions in the quiz. And I'll be able to... Like, the quiz will be able to be evaluated. Okay? Now, guys. 
a lot of you have answered Tolstoy farm because he was inspired by Tolstoy, but it was not named the Tolstoy farm. Okay, so this option definitely is not the answer. Now Satyagraha. So guys, uh, if you know about the life chronology of Mahatma Gandhi, um, can you tell me that when he came to India, uh, in which year did he come? First, let me know if you know this. When did he come to India? Yes. So it was 1915. Yes. Harshal, Prashant, Shubham, all of you are correct. It was 1915. And from which country had he come to India? The country. Very good. So yes, it was the South Africa. Right? When was this topic of Satyagraha started? Like it was after he came to India or before he came to India? The Satyagraha. Yes. Uh, Prashant, it was not before. Before that, uh, like, how did you uh, like th think that? Like, what makes you think that it was before as well? See, in South Africa, he had definitely fought against the apartheid that was there. You know, the racism was that was there, the uh, very bad treatment that was uh, done to the blacks. Okay, so that was the thing that he fought. But the thing about Satyagraha, right? The you know, fighting with the truth. That had come up when Gandhiji had come to India, and then he chose a method. See, he always had this uh, thing for you know fighting with peace and without violence and everything. But the complete idea of Satyagraha it materialized only after he came to India, and that is why when he had set up this farm in South Africa, it was named the Phoenix Farm, and because the idea of Satyagraha had come up, the as in the term Satyagraha had come up later on. Okay, so I hope now you are able to connect to this. All right. Yeah. Okay. Let's move further. <laughs> Let's see question number fifth. After after this, guys, we will have the leaderboard. As in, we will know that who currently is leading the quiz. And after the tenth question, we will have the winner of this quiz. Okay. Gandhi served from the British side in which of the following events or wars? Your options are the Zulu Wars, the Boer Wars, both or none of the options. Okay, good guys. Uh, so the, the correct answer is both. Okay, so Zulu wars and Boer wars. And I'm sorry, I uh, have not read much about both of these wars, but I just uh, found about the Zulu war, which is also known as the Anglo-Zulu war. Zulu war. Okay, so it was fought during the time of January 1879 till July 1879. It was like back then. Okay, so it was basically fought between the British Empire and the Zulu uh, Kingdom. And um, okay, and uh, British had won this war. All right. So it actually the territorial changes that took place was that it was the partition of Zulu Kingdom. If I'm not wrong, this belonged to Canada, uh, the Zulu Kingdom. Okay, no, uh, no, this was in Africa only, South Africa only. Okay, so the location was in South Africa only, and um, okay, okay, all right. So I'll just I'll do one thing. Either you can just read about the Zulu and Boer Wars. It's not that important for your exam as such, so you can skip that as well. But yes, this we can know that the Zulu War and the Boer Wars, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, you know, he had a participation and he had supported British at that time. But maybe after this, these wars, he might have noticed that how badly or what kind of behavior was there towards the blacks, and that is why he, you know, uh, started this fight against the apartheid. Okay. All right. Let's see that who is leading today's quiz. <clears throat> okay. So Siddharth is currently leading the quiz. Then we have Anshika, Tanisha, Jasmine, Kapil, Kapil, Santosh, Navdisha, Shubham, Ritik, and Harshit. Awesome. Very good. Okay. <laughs> okay. The next article is: Will a national judiciary work? So your options, as in this talks about 
in the current context the feasibility of the all india judicial service requires to be studied because as currently we know the judicial services are the, are they are state wise so we need to take different state exams for being into the judicial services so this article actually talks about the possibility of having an all india judicial services like we have the all india civil services as well okay let's see question number 6 and come on guys just click on this link okay i want all of you to be there on the uh, quiz as well very good okay let's see the question under which article of the constitution can parliament create one or more all india services common to the union and state your options are article 233 article 312 article 256 or article 121 yes that is good so article 312 is the correct one okay uh, let's see article 121 i'll tell you it is basically restriction on discussion in parliament so what all some things that cannot be discussed in the parliament okay so article 121 then we have article 233 so article 233 is uh yeah yeah it is the appointment of the district judges okay article 233 233 is the appointment of the district judges okay then we have article 256 so article 256 guys is obligation of states and the union okay obligation of the states and the union and 312 as you already know it basically you know, empowers the parliament okay uh, it empowers the parliament to create one or more all india services common to the union and the state okay yes krishna mani thank you you correct okay all right Let's move further. Let's see question number seven. Which of the following options does not support the creation of a single all India judicial services? As in, what can be the obstacle in this task? Integrated judiciary, Article three hundred and twelve, higher pendency in courts, or the language barriers? What do you think can be the obstacle or the hurdle? in bringing all india judicial services i think just basic common sense guys what do you think very good yes very good guys it is the language barrier because as we know that india has a lot of languages and if at all like for example we have the all india civil services as well so the that exam is also conducted in all official languages so that you know this language barrier can be one obstacle that can be you know seen if it all we try to create the all india judicial services okay and do you, how many uh, official languages do you have guys do we have can anybody tell me in the chat box how many official languages do we have in india official languages very good. yes all of you are correct very good guys 22 uh just mean we do not yeah need to write a 21 plus hindi either way it's like 22 yeah but it's yeah it's okay 22 is the correct answer and which schedule of the indian constitution talks about the official languages one okay very good okay 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 yes eighth is the correct answer uh, anchika no it's not the seventh schedule what is the seventh schedule guys seventh schedule very good Yes, yes, yes. List or the federal scheme, basically. Ah, uh, no. Harshal tribal area. Tribal. Where, guys? In which schedule do we have the tribal area? Okay. Yes, fifth and sixth. Very good. Yes. So sixth has for some particular states, four states. Which are these four states? The sixth schedule talks about these uh, tribal areas. Schedule in tribal areas in four states. Yes, A T M M. we have assam we have tripura meghalaya and mizoram okay very good okay assam manipur meghalaya tripura uh, i am uh, a little confused between mizoram or manipur just check it out guys okay 
for M. One is Meghalaya or Mizoram or Manipur or Mizoram. Okay, just please check it out once I'm a bit, little bit confused. Okay, all right. Okay, I think it's Mizoram. Yeah. Okay, yes, so it's Mizoram. Okay, so it's Assam, Tripura, Mizoram and uh, Meghalaya. Okay, good. All right, let's move further. Let's see question number eight. Dash has the highest judicial position in a district. He has original and appellate jurisdiction over criminal cases. Your options are district magistrate, sessions judge, district judge, or high court advocate. Come on, basic hierarchy of the Indian judiciary. Who has the highest judicial position in the district? Has original and appellate jurisdiction over the criminal cases. Guys, it is the sessions judge, okay? And who has the jurisdiction upon, upon the uh, civil cases? Okay, but, okay, no. Just give me a moment. Okay, all right. Yes, so, yes, basically the civil judge, anyway, the civil judge, yes. Okay, guys, let's move further. Cities along rivers urge to include conservation plans. All right, so policy document from Clean Ganga Mission sets out norms because, because of the pollution in the rivers and the siltation, a lot of sedimentation that takes place in the rivers. The rivers tend to flood more, which becomes problem for the cities that are settled nearby or uh, besides the river banks. Let's see question number nine. National mission for clean Ganga is being implemented by, your options are Jal Board, National Ganga River Basin Authority, Niti Ayo, or respective state water departments. National mission for clean Ganga, NMCG, very important. Uh, like, which is the implementing body or authority? I hope, very good, awesome. Yes, the correct answer guys is the National Ganga River Basin Authority. Okay, so this is the implementing body or the responsible body for implementation of the National Mission for Clean Ganga, okay? Okay, so how many of you have visited Ganga or taken a dukki in Ganga? Like for to, you know, relinquish all our sins and everything. Have you, how many, let me know. Okay. Acha. Jasmine, Anshika, yes. Harshal, not yet. Jaspreet, no. Oh, Ritwik. So you were born in Haridwar. So anyway, all right. Muskan, yes. Who else? Anybody who has visited Ganga maybe or, you know, Siddharth, no. Okay. I'll tell you guys that now it has become so, so, so much better. Uh, yes, it has. Because uh, the last, like once when I had gone to, uh, you know, Ganga, we were all, you know, we had taken the dukki, uh, you know, we had, uh, you know, went down to the water. And trust me, guys, when we just came out, na, we had all, you know, some flowers on us and some uh, co the, 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 the koila, you know, we have that coal koila on all of us. Okay, but now the last time when I went, I think it was in this March itself, I guess. So it was very much clean and I was really happy. The water became like it looked so much blue, like rather than black and all dirty. It was very clean. So I think the National Ganga River Basin Authority and the National Mission for Clean Ganga is working very well. Yeah. So we all should contribute in doing so and should not at all litter, you know, uh, in any of the water bodies. So we should be very, very responsible citizens. Okay. Let's see question number 10. Last question of the day, guys. After this, we will have the winner of today's quiz. Tihiri Dam, India's highest dam, is located on which river? Your options are Alaknanda, Bhagirathi, Chambal, or Periyar. So this is also an important fact for you, which is the highest dam of India. Tihiri is the highest dam. Okay, it's there in Uttarakhand. And which river is it located on? I 
I think two options you can clearly cut. Clearly, they can just not be the answer, guys. Please go answer mat dena. Let's see. Okay, so thank God most of you have given the correct answer. Bhagirathi, guys, is the correct answer. Okay, though Alaknanda also, you know, it flows in India, and Alaknanda and Bhagirathi they have a confluence also. Uh, but uh, Tehri Dam is on the Bhagirathi River. Guys, Chambal does not even flow over here. Okay, Chambal is a very important, like it is a primary river of which state? Come on, can anybody tell me? Chambal ki daku, Chambal ki jungle, where were they? The goons. Okay, so MP, Bihar, UP, all of these. Okay, so this this is the entire area of Chambal River, MP, Bihar, and UP, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, and Bihar. Okay, so primarily Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh also. Okay, so Chambal River. So it does not come to Uttarakhand, guys. Okay, Harshil, uh, maybe maybe some parts of Rajasthan. I have a map over here. Just let, let me have a look. Okay, so. Yeah, actually, actually, uh, you know what we can say is that it is there on the borders of Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. So yes, it's not towards Bihar. I don't think it's towards Bihar. Okay, Gandak guys is there. Okay, so uh, Chambal, I guess it might be one of the tributaries, or it might become a part of Yamuna. I'm sorry, Krishna, I mean, I'm not sure of that. But uh, for Rajasthan, yes, it you know shares actually it goes through the border. Of Madhya Pradesh and uh, Rajasthan also. Okay, so UP maybe a little part of Rajasthan we can say, and we have Madhya Pradesh. Okay, Gujarat, guys, I am not sure. I don't think so. It's Gujarat. Okay, so and Periyar, Periyar, guys, it's not even a North Indian river. Okay, where does Periyar flow through? Or primarily, which state does it belong to? No, it's not Tamil Nadu. Like primarily, it's not Tamil Nadu. Yes, Ritik, it's Kerala. Okay, so just remember because Periyar, Perai, you know all these things uh, in. Uh, okay, maybe yes, Salem in Tamil Nadu, a possible Krishna Vani because you are there, for, you're from that very area. But I think if I'm not wrong, uh, the primary state is Kerala for the Periyar. It might flow to Tamil Nadu later, but uh, the main state is Kerala. Okay. Just remember by the name Periyar, all all these names are you know they belong to a little of South Indian uh, thing. So you know it, it's not even in Uttarakhand. All right, okay guys, let's see who is the winner of today's quiz. Okay, here we have it, guys. So this is therefore Ganga Ganga basically. Okay, so here it is flowing. So it is flowing through Uttaranchal. Uttaranchal is Uttarakhand. Okay, Uttar Pradesh. Then uh, it goes to Bihar. Then it also goes to Kolkata, and then finally it goes to Bangladesh and flows out into the Bay of Bengal. Okay, just to see this. All right. Let's see who is the winner of today's quiz. Okay, awesome. So Kapil is today's winner. Congratulations to you, Kapil. Very good. Then we have Bhavdharani on the second position, Harshil on third position, Santosh on fourth, Ritik fifth position, Ritvik on sixth position, Jaspreet on seventh position, Anshika eighth, Siddharth ninth, and Prashant tenth position. Very good, guys! Congratulations to all of you, and special congratulations to Kapil. So I hope that all of those who had joined for the first time, this was an enjoyable session for you, and along with that, you learned something. So you know this actually this session helps you in reading the newspaper very efficiently, so that you read only the important uh, things. Okay, so congratulations to all of you, and uh, <clears throat> I'll see you guys tomorrow. And uh, welcome, uh, Johnson. Uh, so take care of yourself and uh, stay home, stay safe, everyone. Okay, have a very good day, and all the best to all of you. So I'll sign off for now. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye. You're all you're all welcome, guys. Bye bye, and you know just join tomorrow as well. Okay.